Marvel New Wolverine Origin reveal for the Monster Universe. Let's take a look, see what it's all about. He's the cause of wonder and by the same type of sound. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder. I'm Warren Thompson, and today we have a really awesome report that is finally linking to the origin of the X Men in the MCU. And it is kind of tying back to the Eternals in the MCU, which is really cool because in the comics, the origin of the X-Men are directly related to the origin of the Eternals. Now, we thought they kind of changed this in the MCU, and they did. However, it does look like the Celestials still could be responsible for creating the X-Men slash mutants and the mutant gene. And it looks like the first big dive into the X-Men world and their origin story could be taking place in the Thunderbolts film. So today, we have some pretty big plot points about the Thunderbolts film, including how it could directly connect to the home of the mutants inside the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, a lot to dive into today. Also, some more news about Sentry in the Thunderbolts film and his entry into the MCU. We'll break it down in this video, and also, big reminder, we're still doing our Marvel Legends giveaway. All you have to do to enter is subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. The winner will be announced in a video, and we're going to continue the giveaways into the next year. So, lots of giveaways to come, so be sure to subscribe. So, today's report makes the Thunderbolts movie very, very interesting, even more interesting than it was before. Like I mentioned, we do have some more news about Sentry, but first let's talk about how the Thunderbolts movie is going to connect to the X-Men, specifically a huge connection to Wolverine. According to a report from insider Daniel RPK, Tiamat, which is the dreaming celestial from the Eternals film, the one that Cersei froze at the very end, has been transformed into the island Genosha. And this is huge, and if you don't know why it's huge, don't worry, I'll explain, but this explains why we haven't really heard anything about Tiamat since the Eternals. This is actually a question a lot of fans have been asking every single MCU project that we've gotten so far, be it a movie or show, why hasn't anybody mentioned the huge celestial sticking out of the middle of the ocean that is just sitting there? It's a good question to ask, and it looks like Marvel Studios was planning on addressing this after all. And well, I don't really see how they could have ignored this. But Tiamat is actually going to serve as Genosha, the home of the mutants in Marvel Comics. Now, before we dive into that a little bit more, let's talk about why they're going to go there. The second half of the report states that the Thunderbolts will venture to the island in their film in search of adamantium. Now, if you're not aware, adamantium is the metal that is inside of Wolverine. It's what his claws are made out of, and it laces his entire skeleton. Now, this leads me to believe that a Celestial's body could be made entirely out of adamantium. If not, at least some of it. Otherwise, why would the Thunderbolts be going to Genosha, which again, according to this report, is the head, or maybe the full body if it's hollowed out, of Tiamat? I'm assuming that this is somewhat going to be like nowhere. We know that Nowhere is the decapitated head of a Celestial, and people made a whole city out of the inside of it. In fact, the Guardians of the Galaxy now own that city. So I'm assuming Gnosha is going to be somewhat similar. I'm assuming that people are going to be mining certain materials inside of Taimut's head, one of them being adamantium. Perhaps the whole outside of Celestial's body, the skin, if you will, is made of adamantium. And if you think about it, when we take a look at Nowhere, the skull basically does seem to be stripped of whatever material consists of its skin. So perhaps it's been stripped of its adamantium, and there's a lot of adamantium out there in the universe somewhere. But now we have a whole entire new Celestial whose entire body, for the most part, is accessible and probably covered in adamantium. And this explains why the Thunderbolts are going there, because of course, Valentina Allegra de Fontaine and Thunderbolt Ross, the U.S. government, I should add some corrupt people in the U.S. government, want adamantium for themselves, of course. And in fact, this could lead up to the creation of Wolverine. In fact, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if Thunderbolt Ross hadn't already created the Weapon X program. After all, that just kind of makes perfect sense. We know Thunderbolt Ross has been after the perfect super soldier serum, and now that Harrison Ford is playing Thunderbolt Ross, they clearly have bigger plans 
for him in the MCU. And I won't be surprised if his bigger plans are the Weapon X program. This could be why the Thunderbolts are going to Kaimut for Thunderbolt Ross. And this could lead us to the origin of Wolverine in the MCU. Yes, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is coming back in Deadpool 3, and yes, it is going to be fantastic. And if the rumors are true, some of the old Fox X-Men are going to be appearing in the MCU and Secret Wars as well, which I am super excited for. However, eventually, and possibly very soon since the Thunderbolts are looking for adamantium, eventually new X-Men characters and new mutants are going to have to enter the MCU. And I'm thinking that that's exactly why the Thunderbolts are heading to Taima, to get Adamantium to give to their government. And the reason the Thunderbolts are going there is because Taima's head is most likely going to be like nowhere. It's going to be filled with a lot of different people, a lot of them being criminals. I'm assuming this place is going to kind of run itself. No government really involved. Now, this is very different from Genosha in the comics. In fact, Genosha in the comics has a pretty rough battle. Backstory. The British took it over in the 18th century, then in the 1900s it became its own state, however, they enslaved mutants, and they kind of figured out a way to brainwash mutants and use their powers for specific labor purposes. Now, eventually Magneto would be super pissed off about this, obviously, and he would basically take control. Later on, Professor Xavier goes there as well to try and help him. So eventually down the road, it kind of becomes somewhat of a refuge for mutants. So as you can see here, it's going to be very different. However, it is still apparently going to be titled Genosha, which means that some people inside could be mutants, people with superpowers, people with the X gene. So we could be getting our very first look at the mutants in the MCU, new ones, not like Miss Marvel retconned into a mutant, or Namor, which we already knew, but I'm talking about brand new characters who are mutants in the MCU. So I'm super excited about that, and let me know what you think about that in the comments down below. But we still have some awesome century news to talk about in this video. But first, big thank you to Mint Mobile for sponsoring this video. This video. Most people know about Mint Mobile because of Ryan Reynolds, but most people don't know about Mint Mobile's amazing quality. Now, I live in the mountains and service isn't too good. However, Mint Mobile sent me a free plan and I get better service with their plan than I do with my other provider. But what's crazy is their plan is so much cheaper. Mint Mobile offers wireless for just 15 bucks a month. They give you the best rate whether you're buying for one or a family. And at Mint Mobile, families start at only two lines. All plans come with unlimited limited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Plus, Mint Mobile's modern family plan lets you mix and match data plans so everyone gets the amount of data that's right for them. And you can use your own phone and keep your same number and contacts. So, to get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, including the modern family plan, go to mintmobile.com slash cosmic. That's mintmobile.com slash cosmic. Cut your wireless bill down to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash cosmic. So before we basically knew that Sentry was going to be the villain of the Thunderbolts movie, but we didn't exactly know why. Now, I mentioned before that I wouldn't be surprised if Thunderbolt Ross was basically making a Weapon X program already. And Sentry being in the movie actually backs that up a little bit, if indeed Thunderbolt Ross and Valentina created him. That's actually some pretty significant proof that our government is working to actually enhance and transform people into super people. So I'm calling it right now. The Thunderbolts are going to get adamantium, and that's eventually going to make Wolverine. But back to Sentry. In another report from insider Dan RPK, he says that Sentry will reportedly first appear as a member of the Thunderbolts team. Throughout the film, he will start hearing voices and lose his mind, leaving the Thunderbolts having to stop him at all costs. Now, for those of you who may know a little bit about Sentry, you're probably thinking what I'm thinking, the Void. For those of you who don't know, the Void was a giant shadowy monster that killed over one million people in Manhattan, New York. But what they would eventually go on to discover was that the Void was actually the dark aspect of the Sentry's own powers. It turns out the Void was actually the Sentry's repressed persona. And the only way that they got rid of the Void was by wiping the memory of Robert Reynolds, aka Sentry, of the Sentry superhero himself ever existing. In doing so, the Void went away. But when his memory came back to him, the Void came back. So 
when this report says that the sentry hears a voice inside of his head, I'm thinking that it's the Void, and the Void might actually show up at some point in time during the Thunderbolts film. So that is how the Sentry is apparently going to become the villain of the Thunderbolts movie. Now, I'm assuming the Sentry is also going to become a good person at some point in time and be a hero. In the comics, he is a mentor of Spider-Man. He's a really good friend of Reed Richards and the entire Fantastic Four. Also, the X-Men as well. So I'm assuming Sentry at one point in time is going to be good. However, I am really excited to see him as a part of the Thunderbolts team, and I'm excited to see where this movie heads, because it sounds like it's going to have some pretty serious implications moving forward in the MCU. But hey, let us know your thoughts about this in the comments down below. Let me know what you think about my Wolverine origin theory, or if you have a theory of your own. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to stay up to date on all the latest MCU news and theories. You can always follow us on Instagram and Twitter. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof. Figure out, please subscribe, like this video, and see you guys. Bye.